Hi, uh, I'm Valentin Anturi and I'm going to present our paper about reinforcement learning for a car manufacturing problem. We are interested in planning moves of vehicles components across an assembly line. We have logistics operators who are in charge of collecting components from working stations and delivering them to their consumption points in such a way that there is no break in the manufacturing process. These components are carried over using trolleys, like the one we see on the left, that can be stacked forming, forming a train uh, that should not exceed a given maximal length. And each trolley is specific to a component. Then the problem is to move these carriage trolleys when they are full from their production points to their respective consumption points, and symmetrically to bring back the trolleys when they are empty. Here we only deal with a single operator case, which is a special case of a single vehicle pickup and delivery problem with time window and with ca capacity. For each component, we have what we call the production cycle, which is the time needed for a machine to fill or to consume a trolley, because production and consumption for each component are at the same rate. And for each component, the end of a production cycle marks the start of the next until we reach a time horizon. Then for each component and for each of its production cycle, we have two requests, the full trolley request ending at the consumption point and the empty trolley request ending at the production point. Each pair of requests have the same time window, which correspond to its production cycle. Here we have an example. On the left, we have a complete graph, which is a very tiny workshop, uh, which deals with only three types of components because we have only three pairs of machines represented by these six nodes. And on the right, we have a representation of the production cycles for each component. Each line is for a component and each bar is a production cycle. For example, the first component in yellow has uh, three cycles. And as I said, each cycle corresponds to a pair of requests uh, which are uh, symmetric. In this talk, I will start with notation uh, for the problem. Then I will only talk about one of the three baseline models we described in the paper. We proposed uh, two CP models and compare them to the local search solver uh, currently used at uh, Renault. Both of the CP models outperform the local search, but given the size of the problem, which can have more than 7,000 requests, we think that backtracking search is unlikely to solve hard instances. However, we observe that greedy runs uh, seem uh, often successful. Then we want to take advantage uh, of this observation and we propose to learn a good stochastic policy via reinforcement learning and to exploit this policy with three different methods I will describe. Those three methods are better than the previous ones and I'll give you some results that demonstrate this. I will start with a new definition of the problem. So we have M components with a certain number of cycles for each one. And for each cycle, we have four tasks, the pickup and the delivery for the full trolley, and the pickup and the delivery for the empty one. We call capital A the set of uh, tasks, and each task has a release date, a due date, a duration, and what I'm calling the resource usage is the length of the trolley, uh, which is associated uh, to the component uh, for the pickup and uh, this negative length for deliveries. Finally, we have a distance matrix indicating the time needed to move between the machines where the tasks are performed. The goal then is to find the sequence of this end task uh, called sigma following three constraints. Time windows, for a given sequence, we can compute each starting date and completion date, which must be less than the due date. The second constraint is the precedences. For all components and for all cycles, each pickup must precede its delivery. And the last one is the length of the train at every point in the sequence uh, that should not exceed a maximum uh, Tmax. Now I'm going to describe one of the three baseline models uh, presented in the paper. So we can see this problem as a single resource scheduling problem with sequence dependent setup time, time windows, precedences, and with a reservoir constraint which is filled by pickups and emptied by deliveries. For each task, we define a variable as its starting date, and we also have for each pair of tasks uh, a boolean variable standing for their relative order. 
In fact, we don't need this variable for all pairs of tasks because of the precedences. Uh, we then link those two sets of variables uh, with the constraint one. Finally, the second constraint uh, is for the reservoir resource. We used an algorithm for a paper by Philippe Labori to propagate on starting date from the Boolean variables and from the precedences. About the search strategy, it turns out that building the sequence of tasks uh, chronologically seems to be the best approach to solve this problem. We can try to do something like this with our Boolean variables. Uh, first, we have to compute the set of non-ordered pairs of tasks uh, such that their um, earlier starting times are Pareto minimal. Then we draw a pair in this set and we assign the Boolean such that the task with least earlier starting time uh, comes first. This procedure uh, with, this, with the constraint propagation uh, performs a kind of a nearest neighbor heuristic uh, like the one in, uh, in the TSP. This model was implemented in Choco and this strategy allows us to solve efficiently almost all instances from industrial data and almost without any fail. It also uh, outperforms the current method used uh, at Renault. But these instances are easy and under constraint and this is because the process of assigning components to operator isn't optimized yet. Uh, on synthetic uh, data we generated, uh, this model cannot solve many instances, uh, especially for long time horizon. And we also try to add more filtering, but that was inefficient. The conclusion is, as we succeed to solve several instances without any fail, we think greedy runs uh, lead by good heuristics is the key to solving this problem. Then we propose to learn an efficient heuristic policy and explore methods uh, that can take advantage of this observation. So how to learn a heuristic? First, we need to change our problem a little bit. Uh, we relaxed the due dates to transform the problem into an optimization problem. The objective is then to minimize the maximum tardiness, and uh, if it is equal to zero, uh, then we have a solution of the initial problem. We note L of, L of sigma, the maximum tardiness of the sequence sigma. Now we can see our problem uh, of building a sequence of tasks uh, as a Markov decision process, in which a state corresponds to a partial sequence. The set of actions for a state is a set of tasks that can extend the partial sequence without breaking any precedences nor capacity constraints. Finally, we can define the penalty of taking an action as a marginal increase of the maximum uh, tardiness. Now we can apply standard reinforcement learning as we seek for policy that minimizes the sum of the penalties in this MDP. The problem is that this MDP has an exponentially large number of uh, states. Uh, then the solution is to abstract a state with a descriptor. Uh, our descriptor is called lambda. And it is very a simple one. And uh, it consists of a vector of four criteria for each action uh, available at a state. The first criterion is uh, the emergency of the task, which can be quantified by the distance in time to the due date. The second one is the travel time from the last task in the partial seconds. The third one is the length of the trolley, because um, since all tasks must be done, doing the operation with longer trolleys earlier gives more freedom for later, because these operations have a higher consumption of the train resource. The last criterion is one for pickup and zero for delivery because we want to penalize pickup as leaving a trolley in the train too long seems wasteful. Wasteful. Then we can define a fitness function for a state action pair, which is a simple linear combination of this criteria. And we can get a probability distribution over the action for a state using a softmax, a softmax function with the fitness of each action. This is our stochastic policy pi parameterized by theta, the weight of the linear combination. 
The goal then is to find the value of theta which minimizes the maximum tardiness in average, j of theta, produced by the policy uh, pi theta. For this purpose, we use the policy gradient algorithm. The idea is to minimize j of theta uh, by gradient descent. At first, theta is initialized at uh, random. Then the procedure is generating a solution following uh, pi theta, computing the gradient, and updating the value of theta with a learning rate uh, alpha. To get the gradient of j of theta, we resort to the reinforced learning rule, uh, which gave us an approximation of the gradient, uh, which, show, which is shown in uh, equation 4. The, which is the sum over each position in the sequence uh, of the product of capital of capital G and the gradient of the log of the probability to choose the task we effectively chose at this position, which is given by uh, the policy. Capital G at step J in sigma is called the return and it is computed from the penalty. Either we reached a finer state, then the return is the penalty, or it is the penalty we got when taking the action, plus the penalty we got in the future uh, with a decay factor gamma. The value of this uh, decay factor controls how much a decision has an impact in the future. For gamma equals zero, we only take into account the immediate penalty, and conversely, gamma equal 1 means we consider the sum of the penalty from this step uh, to the end. This uh, procedure works for learning a theta for only one instance, but we would like to have a theta for a set of instances. Then we have to uh, slightly uh, change the procedure. We have now a set of instances, uh, i, and then we have to generate several solutions uh, instead of a unique one. In fact, at this step, the learning process is more stable uh, if we generate several solutions for each instance. Uh, and this is what we did. We generated uh, Q solutions for each instance. And to compute the gradient, we only take the average over, the, over all the generated uh, solutions. We ran this algorithm uh, on a set of generated instances in order to observe the convergence and the impact of the parameter gamma. We plot uh, the values of the objective uh, at each iteration for different uh, values of gamma. And we also tried a version where we use the maximum tardiness of the entire sequence uh, instead of the return. We called it uh, uniform. All data points in the figure are colored with the vector theta interpreted as RGB values, uh, except for the black line at the top of the figure. Uh, then we can see how the values of theta evolve during the process and compare the value found by the different versions. For example, gamma equal 1 uh, and uniform converge uh, to the same values of uh, theta, the green area while gamma equal, uh, equal 0 0.9 uh, goes to the blue area, which are very different uh, values of theta. So for gamma equal 0, the black line at the top, the algorithm uh, leads to a very bad objective. Uh, and we observe that the bigger gamma is, the better the objective value is. Uh, the uniform version is as good as gamma equal 1, except for the stability. Uh, we can see a divergence at the end of the process. Uh, then we kept gamma equal 1 for the, for the following. So now we know how to learn a good stochastic policy, and I'm going to show how we used it. In order to use the policy with our CP model, we need to slightly change it. Uh, indeed, we have to be able to build the sequence from position 1 to the end. Uh, then we need a new set of uh, variables, a sec, standing for the operation at each uh, position, the task at, at each position. We also need a channeling constraint with the Boolean variables. And the other change are, are about uh, propagation and are very simple, and I won't describe them uh, in the presentation. Just note that we don't need the reservoir propagator anymore. And I want to recall that we don't have any objective here. Uh, and this is a satisfaction problem again. 
We have two methods uh, which use the CP model and the policy. Uh, the first one uh, is a rapid restart strategy. The idea is to explore quickly different parts of the search tree. We use a lobby restart with a factor of 15. And the next operation is chosen according to the softmax policy. The second method is a limited discrepancy search. Our idea is to follow a good heuristic without deviating too much, and we think LDS fits well with this approach. We run the LDS implementation of Shoko, and for this approach, we use a deterministic version of the policy, which choose the, the best next action according directly to the fitness function. Besides this two CP approach, we also proposed a multi-start local search using the model with the relaxed due dates. It consists in generating sequences with the stochastic policy and improving them by steepest descent until we get no tardiness or until timeout. We propose two types of move and the time complexity of an iteration um, of the descent is in big O of uh, NM. N is the number of tasks and uh, M is the number of components. The first move is a swap between two tasks uh, in the sequence, and the second is what we call the toggle, and it's based on the observation that there are only two dominant uh, orderings for the four operations of a cycle. Then this move consists in changing the order. Uh, more detail about this move can be found uh, in the paper. In order to compare, to compare those methods, we generated new instances, uh, which are publicly available. Uh, those instances are composed of four classes of 10 instances each. And for each instance, uh, we consider three time horizons, a shift of an operator, which is about seven hours, a day made up of three shifts, and a week of six days. We learned a unique value of uh, theta on the 40 instances of the day horizon. Uh, for 2,000 iterations, which takes about two hours. And uh, it turns out that learning a specific uh, theta for each class of instances was uh, only a little bit better. And uh, we preferred then to learn a unique general theta instead of uh, several, several ones. This can be explained by the fact that we abstract the state with a very simple model, and we think that might change if we use the more complex uh, model. These experiments were run uh, with Shoko, with a timeout of one hour and uh, 10 runs for each, instances, uh, for each instance for the sake of uh, randomization, except for the LDS, which is deterministic. In this table, uh, we report the number of solved instances among the 10 instances per horizon, uh, averaged over the 10 randomized uh, runs. Uh, we also have the average number of fail and the CPU times for solved instances. We can observe uh, two things uh, in this table. Uh, first, all of the three methods outperform the first scheduling model in terms of number of solved uh, instances and in terms of um, CPU time. Uh, the CP softmax model is the best of the three methods, uh, but the multi-start local search has the advantage to produce imperfect solutions uh, for unsolved instances. And in the last column is the average maximum tardiness for unsolved instances. This allowed us to evaluate uh, how far we are to solve really hard instances. And this is my second point. As we can see, there are many uh, instances without solutions. So there is still some work to do. To conclude, uh, we propose to use reinforcement learning to learn simple but efficient heuristics uh, for a real planning uh, problem proposed by Renault. Uh, then we showed how to use these heuristics in three different methods that outperform the current solution used in the company. And now we want to try to use a richer model to abstract uh, the state, like for example, a neural network. And we would like to use these heuristics in uh, a Monte Carlo tree search uh, because we think it would fit well with the problem as we as the 
as this method, the Monte Carlo Tree Search, uh, relies on many rollouts uh, following a heuristic. And finally, this problem is uh, in fact a sub problem of a larger one, which is assigning the components to the operators and then planning the individual routes. And we would like to work on this general problem in the future. And that concludes my presentation. Uh, thanks for watching this video and goodbye.